In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. As we gather at the Lord's banquet, we begin by asking for God's forgiveness and mercy. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us of our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins and bring us to an everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving has shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our consciences may always be lifted up by your mercy as we ask this through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of Exodus. <clears throat> In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name <clears throat> in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Honor your father and your mother, that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not cover your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass, nor anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Lord, you A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, Jews and Greeks alike, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory, God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as man, man, money changers seated there. And he made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen, and spilled the coins of the money changers, and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, take these out of here, and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture, zeal for your house will consume me. And at this the Jews answered and said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? And Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. And the Jews said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. And therefore when he was raised from the dead, 
his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. And while he was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name. And when they saw the signs he was doing, but Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Growing up, I was fortunate enough to have three neighbors who were my age and went to the same school. And we became great friends and we did so many things together. And in the fall of every year, the apple trees in our backyard dropped their apples. And we had picked up a set of golf clubs off the curb that someone was getting rid of. And we used those clubs to shoot those apples as if they were golf balls over a hill and into the woods. There were a few backyards between us and the woods. And most of the apples ended up in the woods, but a few didn't. And one day we went to school and we heard our names called over the PA system. Our last names, please come to the principal's office. And the principal told us about us doing some terrible thing to some dear lady who claimed that we were shooting rocks and apples at her head. The piece that we forgot is that one of those neighbors was a teacher in our school. And we tried to explain, but it didn't work, and we were in detention for quite a while. And one of those days, we were at my house, sitting on the porch, explaining to each other how the law was broken that there's a law that what happens in the neighborhood stays in the neighborhood and it can't involve anything at school. They're two different worlds or else we can't have any fun in the neighborhood. And we were describing ourselves as victims of injustice. My dad walked by and he said, what's wrong with you guys? You're so focused on your little rules or your laws that you forget the people behind them. How would you feel if you were an elderly person and you're weeding in your yard, your yard, and you're being pummeled by apples from above? It was a new perspective for us. And I think that's what's happening when we hear those commandments in the first reading. We hear 10 laws, 10 rules. They're burdensome. But that isn't how the people of the Old Testament saw it. The context is important. These were people who were slaves in Egypt. They prayed and prayed, and God rescued them. He rose up Moses, who led them through the waters of the sea and planted them on dry land. That God saved them, and that same God says to them in the book of Exodus, I will be your God and you will be my people. I will guard you and guide you and you will do these commandments. And they said, great, gladly, we will do that. 
because they were so grateful for what God had done for them. The commandments, living those laws, was their way of demonstrating gratitude. So those rules were focused and so important to them because there was a person behind the rules, a person that loved them, a person that was going to lead them and guide them. In the same way, too, in the gospel passage, Jesus takes God from the temple and makes God part of everyday life. So that God's dwelling in Jesus. He's not hidden in the temple. And Jesus is in the midst of the people. It was a way of saying that the old ways of trying to capture God and trap God in the temple are gone. This temple is cleansed. It's me. I am your God. I am the Father's Son. And so the commandments then involve not just Jesus, but everyone of his disciples and everyone who is born of the Father who comes into the world as God's image and likeness. So behind those commandments are not only the God that loves them, but also, the scripture tells us today, God's people who benefit from our observance of the commandments. They're the basis of how we deal with one another. And so, the liturgy of the Word today challenges us to look at the commandments in a new way. Not as a burden, but as a way of demonstrating our gratitude to God and our love for one another. The commandments are the rails between which we live our lives. It supports us and guides us and leads us. The commandments of God, they're not a burden. They're our way of telling God how much we love Him and one another. Together, we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence and with faith, we come before the Lord with our needs. 
for the church. May the Holy Spirit strengthen her in teaching God's law in spirit and truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For elected leaders, that they may serve with wisdom, compassion, and humility for all the people in their care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those preparing to be baptized this Easter and those to be received into full communion with the Catholic Church, may they be given a deeper awareness of God's loving presence in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering any type of disease or affliction, may the Lord bring them comfort and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the living and deceased members of Holy Sepulchre and St. Killian parishes, and for the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we give you thanks for the gift of your law. Help us to live your law as a way of gratitude for all that you have given to us as we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, who is the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, be pleased with these sacrificial offerings and grant that we who beseech pardon for our sins may take care to forgive our neighbor as we ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you will that our self-denial should give you thanks. Humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and help us imitate you in your kindness. And so with all the saints and angels, we proclaim your glory as with one voice 
we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O Lord, as we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you for what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.